Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. Today we're covering the color layer for Redshift. The best way I can describe it is it's essentially Photoshop for Redshift. Um, it's a way of taking layers uh, and putting them on top of each other along with their blending modes. Um, then one important thing to note is that it is not for materials, it is only for rasterized uh, artwork. So uh, having said that, let's show you how to use it. Uh, first things first, um, I have a setup here with a simple sphere as a texture on it with a displacement map, um, just to have some interest. Um, and let's grab the color layer node, which is under color, color layer. And right away you see it gives you a few options, base, layers one, two, and then th uh, through seven. Um, it's pretty similar to what you're expecting. Uh, the biggest difference is that the base layer is actually on top. So the bottom is on the top and the top is on the bottom. Um, so just know that, that the base is at the bottom and the top layer is uh, at the top, layer seven. So um, let's get the same setup that we have currently. So currently in this material, I have a blue color. Um, let's just come in here, copy the hex, and let's pipe it into our base color. So base color, your only option is to put in a color. Now this can just be a solid color or you can pipe in an image if you'd like to go that route. Uh, for now, we're just gonna do a solid color so it's easily to demonstrate. Um, and then let's take our color layer out and let's put it into our diffuse color. You'll see right away it goes black. Okay, well, why'd that happen? That's pretty simple. Um, right away, the color layer wants to enable a second layer, and that is because they expect you to do more than one thing with it. So they're trying to be helpful. Sometimes it's not, but I get where they're going with it. Um, but sometimes you do want to check your base layer. So let's just check it. It's cool. We'll re-enable it and you'll see that we have uh, very similar options, but we have a couple more. We have a mask and we have blending modes. So mask is essentially uh, opacity. That's really what you can think of it as. Um, it's just the strength of uh, how powerful that this layer is. Uh, color is color. Um, so once again, you can do any color you want, uh, but you can also pipe in uh, an image, right? Or really anything with a color value. Um, which I'll show you in just a few minutes. And then our blending modes, which uh, we'll cover in just a second. So you'll see that when I change this color to let's say like a nice pink, it goes pink and the blue is completely gone. If I put this to 50%, now we're mixed down exactly 50%. Zero is zero, hundred's a hundred. Okay. Um, and then if we go to our blending modes, um, we have our usual suspects here. So we have add, subtract, multiply, screen, overlay, things that you're probably pretty familiar with. And if you're not, um, I'll put a link to a description to all of them in the comment section. For now, uh, just take my word for it. They're there <laughs> and they're, uh, they're not that difficult to use. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, After Effects, it's all the same stuff. So let's pipe in uh, a logo texture here. Uh, currently, I have um, the you and me logo, which we'll use, and let's put it in the layer one color. So right away, we see a result. Um, we see that it's overtaking the entire the entire layer, right? So it's uh, it's just A on top of B, you know, um, this being A and this being B. Um, if we were to mix it down to 50%, we're starting to get to see more of that blue color. Pretty straightforward. Um, and this is where I can really show you kind of how the blending modes work. So if we go screen, we're going to lose all of, our, all of our blacks. And if we go multiply, we'll lose the whites, so on and so on. We can do like a soft light, get that kind of effect. And we can still mix it down, which is pretty nice. Um, again, very similar to Photoshop, if not exactly the same thing. Uh, that's cool. Right now, this layer does not have any alpha. So assuming that is your case, um, you will need to pipe in alpha. So you'll see over here in the color layer uh, that we have an option for a mask. Now, a mask can just be straight up transparency or it can be driven by an image that um, it will look at its luminance values. So I've created this alpha texture that's going to cut out the circle. 
uh, for our logo and everything white will be visible and everything black will be taken out. So if we pipe this into layer, uh, layer one mask, there we go. Layer one mask, you'll see that come over here, you'll see that we have now cut out our circle, right? Whereas before, if I take it out, we don't have it and we can't see anything in the background. It's just repeating. So that's great. Um, again, pretty, pretty straightforward here. Um, but it can be confusing because sometimes, uh, masking <laughs> can mean a lot of different things. Um, so that's cool. Uh, and then if you want to add more layers, it's pretty much as simple as what you would expect. All right. Well, I need another layer. What do I do? All right. Well, let's say we have these scratches here and I want them to kind of beat up our texture a little bit. So let's go ahead and put them on. Once again, we, we don't see them because they're not enabled. So past layer one, you have to enable them yourself. Um, it goes straight to normal mode in the mask. So let's put this to screen. And now you can see we have our scratches on top. Of course, dial them in as you see fit. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, and once again, you can you can mask this out if you need to. Like I could come in here and I could just say, oh, I just want this to be inside, you know, the the logo itself. Cool. Uh, no problem. So that's done. Or hey, maybe you know I want I want it to be on the outside. So I can take this and say invert it, and then bring it into right here. Now it's just on the outside. So you have a lot of control that way. Um, it's nice too, because you can use just the same texture for everything. Um, and just, I'll do one more uh, pipe in. We have this like watercolory image I found, um, which we can put into layer three. And once again, it overtakes everything. Let's try maybe, I don't know, soft light. Mm, not amazing. Let's try lighten. Yeah, that's cool. So now you see it's kind of blending throughout this watercolor uh, texture. And hey, you know what? Let's actually, let's just put this inside the logo. So we're gonna put this under layer three mask. And now it's just happening inside that logo. So you can see, if I can get an update, yep. You can see that our watercolor is actually just happening inside the logo. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a really powerful tool, and I highly recommend using it. You can save yourself a lot of time and have a lot of control without having to deal with uh, going back and forth from Photoshop. Um, so cool. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you on the next one.